uh, aloha to everyone. <laughs> and bienvenidos. <laughs> And good morning <laughs> to all of you. And to all of our listeners, I understand this is being webcast to our regional uh, staffs and employees out in the field, so a good morning uh, to them as well. Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming here this, after, this morning. It's a great turnout. I, it's unbelievable the participation that we've been seeing at these events that we've been hosting here for the first time at the Department of Labor. And it's so fitting because we're celebrating Asian Pacific Islander Month. And it's a celebration for all of us, for, for their heritage, for the contributions that they make to our country and to the workforce in, in the country. And I want to thank uh, all the employees here, uh, the uh, Asian Pacific American Heritage uh, Committee that put this together. We have a, uh, just a whole litany of activities that have been going on and I think it's rich in culture and education and something that um, we ought to do uh, when, whenever we can celebrate uh, our culture and our heritage. And I also want to uh, thank you for your commitment to public service, the committee, and for all of you uh, public servants that are here sitting and watching this, and for your support of the AAPI community here at the department. Um, you know the vast diversity of language, languages, uh, religion, and also cultural tradition are rich in the Asian Pacific Islander communities, and they help to strengthen the fabric of our country. And I want to just say how important it's been for me to be a part of, uh, of that uh, culture and enrichment. Um, as a member of the House, for the, for the last uh, nine years, I represented a district that was very diverse. About 25 percent were Asian Pacific Islander, and the largest single group was Chinese, Taiwanese, and Filipino and had many people of, of Japanese ancestry and other, other cultures, Asian Pacific, uh, representing the West Indies as well. Um, a very, very uh, large cultural uh, region in Southern California that continues to grow. And as you know, uh, the third largest uh, ethnic group is now the Asian Pacific Islander community. So it's going to be one of those communities that will continue to expand and I know will continue to, to help us make progress here in our, in our country. Um, I'm pleased that Congresswoman uh, Hirono, who's a personal friend of mine uh, and a colleague, we served together uh, in the House uh, for the last, I believe, what, four years? And she's just been an outstanding, outstanding member of Congress. In the U.S. House of Representatives, uh, where we served, we became good friends as members of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus and also the Women's Caucus. We worked very closely on women and children's issues. She's someone who's achieved the American dream and is someone that we can all admire. Uh, Congresswoman Hirono was born in Fukushima, Japan, and is the first uh, immigrant woman of Asian ancestry to serve in the U.S. House of Representatives. She is a graduate from the University of Hawaii at Manao, and she earned her law degree from Georgetown University Law Center. Uh, Congresswoman Hirono is a member of the Committee on Education and Labor, and the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, and the Committee on Small Business. And prior to her coming to Congress, she served as a Deputy Attorney General and Lieutenant Governor for the State of Hawaii. I also know that she was one of the first women also from our, from our uh, part of the aisle <laughs> that ran for governor uh, in her state. Uh, the theme of this year's observance is a leadership to meet challenges of a changing world. And I applaud the leadership of Congresswoman Hirono, who has shown much of that throughout her career. Uh, please join me in welcoming her for this conversation that we will have. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Aloha, everybody. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for those lovely words. Um, Congresswoman Hirono, you have such a diverse background and uh, it would be very interesting, I think, for people to, to kind of get a sense of your own personal background and, and how you um, have helped to inspire so many, so many women and women of color, women of Asian Pacific descent, but just a little history about yourself might be helpful. I was born in Japan in a, a little town or village. Uh, I grew up with my grandparents on their rice farm, so this was pretty rural Japan right after World War II. And so, uh, you know, I, I spent my formative years in a totally different culture for which I'm grateful. But truly, uh, I think my life is an example of how an individual can make a difference, and that's really how I've, uh, I've conducted my life. And the person who made a difference and totally changed my life was my mother 
who decided to leave an abusive marriage in Japan at a time when Japanese women clearly were not uh, considered very powerful or supported in any way. And she decided to bring her children to uh, this country. And I'm so glad she picked a diverse place such as Hawaii to bring us to, and that's my background. I, I think that all of us have people in our lives who really impact what we do and the decisions we make. And my mother uh, was that. She continues to be an inspiration. And she lives with us. She's 84 now. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Um, we've we've uh, worked together on so many issues, uh, women and children. And you've been just a leader in, in child care. Um, what uh, what drives what drives you, Macy? What is what has driven you to do this work to be a public servant? When I came to this country, I had absolutely no idea what to expect because here I am in a little place in Japan, rural Japan, no running water. We washed our clothes in big ponds out in the back, and I, I had absolutely no idea about America or Hawaii. And when I left that, when I came uh, to Hawaii um, on a boat, because I don't know if we even had it. I know we had airplanes, but certainly not jet travel. And I um, came here with my mother and my older brother in steerage. So uh, we definitely did not have much. Uh, I had no idea what life in this country would have in store for me. But I, I grew up in going to public schools and, and to recognize that I wanted to do something in my life that was going to show my gratitude to this country that welcomed me and my family and provided opportunities I never ever would have had in Japan. And the major opportunity, of course, was for education. I wanted to give back uh, in some way. But it, it was really when I was going to college during the Vietnam War when so many of us uh, were questioning what our country was doing. And uh, I began to think about politics as a way to make social changes. It took me a long time, though, to figure out that maybe I could be a change agent myself. I spent a number of years helping other people run for office. And um, this is very typical of not just Asian, uh, Asian Americans, but women. It takes us a while to get to the point where we feel that we can foist ourselves on the unsuspecting public. <laughs> and so um, I, it, it took me maybe a decade to, uh, to get an education and to get certain credentials and to run for office. But I've spent most of my adult life, if, if you can believe it, uh, running for office, and, and I said to my husband recently, can you imagine spending most of your adult life running for office? My gosh, it's very odd. <laughs> and I, didn't, I certainly didn't plan my life this way, but I feel very grateful uh, for this privilege to serve, and I continue to believe that we can look to politics as a way to make social changes. And to meet people like you, Hilda, I hope you don't mind me calling you Hilda. Please call me Maisie, everybody in Hawaii does. Um, to meet people like you and other committed, committed individuals who, uh, regardless of how long they've served in the House, because people like John Dingell and, and uh, David Obie, they got elected in their, in their 20s. And to realize that they still have that commitment and that drive to make a difference. It's kind of a long answer to your short question. <laughs> but you can see that I, I, I am very motivated in what I'm doing, and it's a real privilege to be serving at this time.